Episode 251. Who shouted cut? Though in a difficult position, Jade still wanted to give the scene her best shot. She didn't want the director to think she was putting on airs, and she didn't want to disappoint him. Jade was usually very professional, but when she knew she was going to have to perform a kissing scene, she started making mistakes. The director was very unhappy. Jade, what's wrong with you today? He asked, looking exasperated. You have to show that you have to leave, but that you don't want to leave. Okay, let's do it again. She tried her best to follow the director's instructions and do what he wanted, but she still felt uncomfortable. She didn't want to kiss an unfamiliar man. Let's roll, the director instructed as the clap of the clapperboard reverberated across the set. Robert was walking toward her, and then she started to recite her lines. Don't be like this. We can't be together. There was a trace of painful reluctance in her voice. She took a step back from Robert, now standing in front of her. But he took another step forward and grabbing her waist, pulled her toward him. She froze in shock and raised her eyes to look at him. Then she pulled away, struggling from his hold, seeming to reject him. Robert stared at her and said, No, I won't leave you. I love you more than life. Robert lowered his head and was about to kiss her, but Jade turned her head away to avoid his lips. Although there was no detail in the script about the kissing scene or the emotions he wanted to be portrayed, the director didn't stop the filming. Sometimes scenes required the actors to perform them instinctively, but he felt that Jade was struggling too much and they would have to film the scene again. If Jade continued like this, he would be stuck. Robert's eyes darkened when Jade turned her head to avoid his kiss. I can't take this anymore. What do I do next? He thought in frustration. He leaned close to her ear and whispered, If you want to become a professional actor, you'll have to overcome this phobia. He was trying to be patient and encourage her because he knew she was inexperienced. He wanted to guide her to become a better actor and he didn't blame her for what had just happened. As this had been an unexpected change to the script, neither of them had been prepared. Jade's body was trembling. She felt angry at being in this position. She took a deep breath, looked at Robert, and frowned. Robert didn't know whether to laugh or cry when he saw her pained expression. In reality, most women wanted to kiss him. But this woman, who was clearly a newcomer and an unknown actress, didn't have the slightest inclination. This is a strange situation to be in he thought in amusement. He hugged her reassuringly and whispered, close your eyes and try to forget it's me you're kissing. You can keep your mouth closed if it makes you more comfortable. I won't do anything unnecessary. A flush rose to Jade's face and she grimaced, drawing her mouth into a tight line. She looked nervous, but determined. Robert could feel her shaking. As he lowered his head to kiss her, her fragrance engulfed him. She smelled fresh. Her delicate and tender lips were enticing. What's wrong with me? He thought. Why is she affecting me this way? It felt like his heart moved and skipped a beat. He had performed kissing scenes with countless actresses, but he had never experienced such feelings before. It's just a shoot, he reminded himself. Don't take it seriously. He realized he was looking forward to the kissing scene with Jade. The closer Robert's lips got, the more anxious Jade became. Dario kept appearing in her mind. His handsome face his overbearing manner, his kiss, everything about him. Just as their lips were about to touch, someone shouted, Cut! Jade's heart jumped, and she took a quick step back. She was happy that the moment had been interrupted. Robert looked annoyed. He had wanted intimate contact with Jade. Everyone on the set turned to gaze toward the director in unison. There had been no problem with the scene until then, so they were not sure why he'd stopped filming. Who cut the scene? He demanded angrily. It had certainly not been him. It was me. A cold voice reverberated from the back of the film set. Everyone turned toward the voice and recognized the speaker as Robert's manager. He was known as one of the best managers in the industry. The man strode purposefully toward the director and said something to him that no one could hear. The director's expression changed. What did you say? You want a double to do the kissing scene? He seldom used doubles and did not think that the scene required one. In fact, he wanted the actors to do the scene. Also, he knew that Robert was a very dedicated actor and did not like using doubles. He even did his own stunts. And here was his manager saying that a kissing double would do the scene on his behalf. He couldn't believe it, and was about to object vehemently when the producer approached him. He had a severe expression, 
and whispered something into the director's ear. I'm sorry, Dario Foster is the film's main investor. If he wants a kissing double, he gets one. He whispered into the director's ear. Episode 252, A Perfect Kiss. The director's expression changed, and he nodded in agreement. Usually, an investor wouldn't interfere with the film's production, let alone care about a kissing scene, so he was confused and a little irritated. The director gritted his teeth and decided it was not worth balling out with the movie's biggest investor. He would first wait and see the results of using the double for the kissing scene. If it didn't meet his standards he would insist that Robert do the scene personally. Jade's eyebrows furrowed. She had initially heaved a sigh of relief, but her nervousness returned. She initially thought the director had stopped filming because he had changed his mind about the kissing scene. She hadn't expected it to be Robert's manager, or that Robert's role would be played by a double. But she still had to shoot the kissing scene. It didn't matter who she kissed. She would be uncomfortable and nervous kissing any man other than her husband. Robert's expression was downcast and he seemed agitated. He strode toward his manager and asked coldly, "'What's going on? I never asked for a double to do this scene.' He'd been looking forward to this kiss. His manager leaned toward him and, in a low voice, said, "'Robert, I'm doing this for your own good. You should trust me. I always act in your best interests.' Robert angrily strode off and sat down. A few minutes passed, and a very imposing man walked onto the stage, who he assumed was his double." The people on the set were stunned and started to chatter among themselves. Wow, he's so handsome. Oh my, is he really the double? He's so good looking, even more so than Robert. Quickly, hold me, I'm going to faint. Who is he? I've never seen him before. The double's appearance had electrified the atmosphere on the set. Robert's expression changed and his face flushed. Why would my manager do this? He thought in confusion. His manager had decided this because he had been told that if Robert did the kissing scene, he would be banned from the internet, and he knew that the person who had asked to be his double was very capable of carrying out that threat. When Jade saw who the double was, she was utterly stunned and in disbelief. He walked toward her, gave her a captivating smile and said, Hello, Miss Winslet. Jade suppressed her excitement and answered coolly, Hi. The handsome man in front of her was her husband, Dario. Why is he here? She thought, trying to make sense of his presence. He had gone to New York the previous night. Questions raced through her mind. Why is he back so soon? Did he come to the set to see me? She wondered. Dario stepped closer to Jade. And before the director could call Roll, he put his arms around her waist and kissed her. His actions were so sudden that no one on set had time to react. The director, who wanted to stop them, looked on in surprise. Not only was Jade not resisting, but she was reciprocating. Jade was also stunned by Dario's actions, but she instinctively responded to him, her body filling with familiar warmth. She hugged his sturdy body and closed her eyes, losing herself in the kiss. Okay, excellent, the director said, and continued impatiently. What are you all standing around for? Lights? Camera? Action? He was irritated that the kissing double had started without his signal, but what he saw excited him. It was captivating. Everyone on the set immediately immersed themselves in filming the scene. Dario held Jade's slender waist with one hand and the back of her head with the other, making their kiss even more intimate. Jade's face became flushed. Although this was not the first time she had kissed Dario, it was the first time in front of a group of people, and she was feeling shy, so she started to pull away. Dario tightened his hold, kissing her more and more intensely. He had only been away from Jade for one night, but he realized how much he missed her. Violet watched from the side, her eyes twinkling. It's a live kissing scene, and they're both so good looking, she thought. What she was seeing was explosive. Sometimes kissing scenes were more serious than passionate. These two were wholly immersed in their kiss and oblivious to those around them. The surrounding people, who were not involved in the filming, whispered among themselves. Wow, I want a kiss from that double. He's so handsome, only a beautiful actor like Jade Winslet can match him. This is so intense. Meanwhile, the director shouted encouragingly, Good, that's great! The director hadn't expected the kissing double's acting skills to be so excellent. They even surpassed Robert's. This is what's needed to make this a blockbuster, he thought. 
Episode 253, The Kissing Double. The director decided to include some of the riveting footage of the kissing scene in the trailer. Robert was sitting on the side watching the filming with a pale face. He looked coldly at the two people entangled with each other. He couldn't believe that Jade didn't resist and even kissed the man back. It had not been like that with him. She hadn't even wanted to touch him. Who is that man? Robert wondered. Robert felt disappointed when he saw Dario's lips touch Jade's. He wished he was the double kissing her. When the director had been instructed that a double would do the kiss rather than Robert, he had been unhappy. But now, he was delighted with this result. He hadn't witnessed such an intense kissing scene in his many years as a director. The kiss in the context of the tragic circumstances would move the audience. Cameraman, a close-up, closer, good, good, that's it. It's a wrap the director shouted excitedly. Although it had been troublesome to introduce the kissing scene, the director felt it had been worth the effort. He knew that Jade disliked shooting such scenes, but instead of a forced kissing scene with Robert, he had witnessed passionate kissing with the double. I'll have a talk with Jade about this, he thought. He resolved that in the future, he would always use this double for Jade's kissing scenes. The scene was filmed three times to capture every angle. It was late and everyone was exhausted, especially Jade. She felt smothered by the kissing and gave a sigh of relief when the filming ceased. However, Jade was unaffected because he would be happy to spend all day kissing Jade. Jade looked at her husband with dismay. She knew that the scene had been good and she had enjoyed kissing him, but she was irritated that he had kissed her using his tongue. She took a deep breath, trying to regain her composure. Dario strode off the set immediately when filming was concluded. To most of the film crew, Dario was just the mysterious kissing double. They had no idea who he was. They started to chatter animatedly among themselves, giving Dario and Jade a round of applause. That was great. Really excellent. The kissing was so real. I'm about to cry. Hey, where's he going? I want his autograph and a photo with him. Jade flushed with embarrassment. She jabbed her side with her index finger to bring her back to reality and watched Dario leave, her eyes full of love. However, the director and the others didn't take much notice of Jade's expression. They thought she'd been so immersed in the filming that she was still in character. The director was so delighted that he offered to treat everyone to supper. Jade declined, saying she was too tired and wanted to rest. Before Dario had left, he had whispered to Jade that he would wait for her, making her heart burst with joy. She quickly walked toward her changing room. It was already 11 at night, and she was relieved that the day's work was over. Violet rushed over to her excitedly. Wow, I didn't realize you were so talented, she said. And you don't realize how envious us women are that you got to kiss that hunk. Violet paused and continued. Doesn't he look familiar to you? Maybe I've seen him in my dreams. He secretly took pictures of him, so of course he looks familiar, Jade thought incredulously. She smiled at Violet, fighting hard to maintain her composure, and went and sat at the dressing table. Violet immediately took the initiative to help Jade remove her makeup with cotton wipes and makeup remover. There was a look of excitement on her face. He's very handsome, but he's still a double, an unknown. Robert's different, and he's the heartthrob of the country. If you'd done the kissing scene with him, your value would have skyrocketed. Most female actors who have done kissing scenes with him have become celebrities, Violet said, rattling on as she tried to help Jade analyze the pros and cons of kissing a double rather than Robert. Jade didn't say anything and listened patiently to Violet, smiling. Her eyes sparkled. Violet continued helping Jade remove her makeup. Her thoughts were filled with the image of the kissing double. She couldn't stop thinking about him. She looked at Jade thoughtfully and then asked, Why are you smiling? Have you taken a fancy to the double? Then, as an afterthought, she added, He's so good looking that he's probably very popular with the ladies. Don't waste your time on him. Jade didn't respond. If she realizes he's my husband, it'll drive her crazy, she thought in amusement. Go home and rest. You've been shooting for a long time and you must be exhausted, Violet said, patting her on the shoulder. Jade nodded in agreement, her thoughts focusing on seeing Dario. She wasn't paying attention, nor did she care about what Violet was saying. Violet turned to Jade and said, I know I've seen that man before. Maybe I did meet him in a dream. She looked perplexed. Episode 254. Why are they photographing us? Jade was amused by Violet's comments. Just then, Caroline knocked and entered the changing room. She walked over to Jade and said in a soft voice, Hurry up. 
Adario is waiting for you outside. Violet overheard, and her eyebrows shot up. She asked curiously, Dario? Who is Dario? And why is he waiting for you? Jade smiled awkwardly. Before she could respond, Caroline snapped, Don't worry about things that aren't your business. Violet was taken aback and immediately apologized. Yes, I suppose it isn't. I'm sorry, Caroline. I won't ask any more. There was a trace of embarrassment on her face from the reprimand. Caroline's attitude softened a little, and she said to her, All right, let me take you to the hotel where you'll be spending the night. Let's go. Okay, thank you, Violet said, and gave Jade a quick goodbye hug before grabbing her overnight bag and following Caroline. Jade walked out and saw a black Rolls Royce parked about a hundred yards away. She assumed it was Dario's car and hurriedly strode toward it. He was the only person in the car. Did he drive from New York himself? He wondered. He usually had a driver. Dario impatiently opened the passenger door and indicated she should get in. Jade found the passenger seat had been pulled down and she couldn't sit. Dario pushed her down so she was almost lying flat. He bent over, pulled the door closed and pressed his lips to hers. The confined space in the car was very intimate. Their kiss was even more passionate than during the filming. He was becoming aroused and restraining himself. He drew away and moved his lips to Jade's ear. In his low and bewitching voice, he said, Did you miss me 100 times today? No, I was very busy today. I didn't have time to miss you, Jade said, teasingly sticking her tongue out at him and smiling. Dario's face darkened and she continued, Maybe not 100 times, but at least 99. I missed you... As she spoke, she extended her arms around his neck and kissed him on the lips. Don't think you can seduce me wherever you want just because I've fallen for you hook, line and sinker, he said. Dario was pleased she was taking the initiative and it aroused him. Jade heard the desire and impatience in his voice. She pulled away and, somewhat embarrassingly, said, I don't do it on purpose. After a pause, she continued shyly. By the way, why are you here? You didn't tell me that apart from being in charge of the Millican Agency's finances, you're in charge of kissing scenes in movies. Daria smiled and pressed her down on the chair again. Then he kissed her nose playfully and said gently, Yes, I miss Jade's exclusive kissing double. From now on, I'll do all your kissing scenes. Daria, you're so bad and selfish. Jade's words were intended in jest, but no sooner were the words out of her mouth than Daria responded in a domineering tone. What? Do you want to shoot kissing scenes with someone else? Who? I'll get them fired. Jade was taken aback and didn't dare say anything in response. Why he's always so domineering scares me, she thought. Eventually, Jade said, No one. Why would I want to shoot kissing scenes with anyone but you? She gave him a coy smile and mimicked him by pinching his nose playfully. He's incredibly handsome, too handsome. That's why women lust after him, she thought. But he was hers, and they were alone. She was savouring being in his arms, although she was exhausted. She cherished every moment she was with him. After lying together in silence for a while, she said with some disappointment, By the way, I need to get some sleep. I must be up early tomorrow. I'll try to finish the scene as soon as possible and get back to you. Daria's heart beat faster when he heard her words. She had touched him deeply. If Caroline hadn't sent him a message... He wouldn't have known that Jade had been shooting for 10 straight hours and that she was being forced to shoot a kissing scene. Let's not go back to the hotel they booked you in, he said. It's got single beds and I want to cuddle you. Dario adjusted his seat and started the car. Jade wanted to ask where he was taking her, but she was too tired to speak. Lie down and rest. I'll wake you when we arrive, Dario said, patting her head. Jade knew that the small mountain village they were shooting in was remote and she was staying in the only hotel. She didn't know that Dara had already booked a better hotel in the neighbouring town, half an hour away. When they arrived, he picked her up gently and carried her to the hotel's reception. Although she felt embarrassed, she didn't struggle. There were paparazzi waiting, who started photographing them as soon as they entered. I'm not famous enough for the paparazzi to photograph me, she thought, and buried her head further into Dara's chest. Why are they photographing us? She asked in a whisper. Episode 255 Transparency is not always good. Don't worry, ignore them, Daria answered confidently. 
Jade was speechless as they entered the room. It was a large and luxurious presidential suite, and it did not match the rundown outward appearance of the hotel at all. Dario carried her to the bed, kissed her, and then touched her belly tenderly. Doesn't he realize I'm on my period, she thought. She moved his hand away, lowered her eyes shyly and said, Dario, it's only the second day, I'm still, you know, so we can't have sex tonight. He laughed and replied, I was just going to ask you if you're hungry. Oh, she replied, slightly embarrassed by the misunderstanding. I'm not hungry. Let's get ready for bed and go to sleep. We have an early start tomorrow. He was about to reply when she bombarded him with a series of questions. Have you finished all your business in New York? Don't you have work to do tomorrow? Are you sure that you'll have time to come? Facing his wife's barrage of questions, he didn't know which one to answer first. Don't worry, he began. Nothing is more important than you. Anyway, I know you can't sleep at night without me, he said with a cheeky smile. As for whether you're hungry or not, I was just asking. You're a big star now, so you need to pay attention to your figure. I'm afraid you'll have to eat a bit less in the future, he added. She frowned and asked, What do you mean by that? Are you saying that I'm fat? She looked down and pinched her belly and couldn't see any fat. I'm not fat at all, she thought. I might not have a six-pack, but... I don't really want one. She looked at her husband, who was smiling like a naughty schoolboy. I think he's making fun of me, she realized. Go take a bath, Dario suggested. I have some matters to take care of. I left you some pajamas in the bathroom. He picked her up in his arms, and she pretended to struggle as he carried her in the direction of the bathroom. He seems to be enjoying teasing me, she thought. Jade giggled happily as he pretended to stumble due to her apparent excessive weight and she hit him in mock anger. He put her down at the door, and she walked into the bathroom smiling happily. There was a set of pyjamas, underwear, and a towel on the shelf. The pyjamas were new, conservative, and looked very comfortable. That's very considerate of him, she thought. He just wants me to be comfortable. Dario went to the desk, switched on his laptop, and turned his attention to his work. Although he was able to delegate most of it, he felt it was important to take a close interest in what was going on, and to make sure that things were getting done properly. Jade noticed with great surprise that the walls of the bathroom and even the bath itself were made of transparent glass. She felt both embarrassed and self-conscious. Who would design a room like this? What on earth was the designer thinking? She wondered. And why has Dario booked us a suite with a transparent bathroom? She held her pajamas in her arms and looked through the transparent wall at Dario in the next room. His back was facing her, and he seemed engrossed in his laptop, so she relaxed a little. She felt very tired and was desperate to take a bath and unwind. She took off her clothes and eased herself into the warm, soapy water. Her body relaxed instantly, and she closed her eyes and started to sing happily. As she was facing away from Dario, she didn't notice that her singing had attracted his attention. Her melodic voice was the first thing to intrigue him, but once he looked over and saw Jade's naked body through the layers of transparent glass, his attention was intently focused on her every move. Jade continued washing and singing happily, unaware of the dark eyes staring at her. Her hands moved sensually over her delicate neck, massaging the tense muscles there. Daria watched as the bubbles formed on her back as she lathered herself, making her skin barely visible and teasing his imagination. His mouth felt dry and he turned off his computer. Although he looked calm, his heart felt like it was beating uncontrollably in his chest and his breathing became shallow and laboured. He walked over to the fridge, chose a bottle of wine, and poured himself a glass. Although he drank thirstily, it did little to alleviate the sensation of a dry throat. Jade seemed to be in a good mood and was utterly absorbed in her singing, unaware of being watched. Seeing her move her delicate hands around her body, Dario desperately wanted to have her, but he knew that she wouldn't want to have sex that night. He felt the deep frustration of wanting her but not being able to have her. Dario couldn't bear it any longer. He put his wine glass down on the desk and walked toward the bathroom. Episode 256 The Uncontrollable Temptation Dario stood at the door and called out, Jade, if you spend too long in the bath, you'll end up shriveled like a prune. You should come out now. Jade had been happily singing in her own little world, but the sound of her husband's voice brought her back to reality, and she looked around and saw his handsome face looking through the transparent door. He was staring at her body, and she squealed at the sense of intrusion. 
His face looked slightly flushed, and she could see that he was aroused from the mishappen bulge in his pants. She covered her private parts as well as she could with her hands and frowned at him. Dario, you were meant to be working, not sneaking around watching me in the bath, she said indignantly. As soon as her initial shock was over, her anger turned to embarrassment, and she blushed furiously and lowered her eyes. Dario observed her long eyelashes and beautiful almond eyes. She looked so vulnerable, he thought. I just want to kiss her. Jade was unaware that by covering herself, she had only intrigued him further and fed his now stimulated imagination. He began to fantasize about what they could do together, and to him, her shyness seemed like a deliberate, seductive ploy. He looked longingly at her long, slender legs and narrowed his eyes. Surely she knows that she's driving me insane, he thought. Will you hurry up and come out? Are you trying to kill me? He asked in frustration. She could see his obvious annoyance and got out of the bath, quickly drying herself, during which time Dario caught several glances that only did more to arouse his lust. No longer able to suppress his desire, he rushed into the bathroom and covered her tormenting body in a large towel. Take these pajamas and get dressed under the covers, will you? He said. Jade was amused at his lack of self-control and innocently took the pajamas and followed his instructions. Dario immediately took off his own clothes and rushed into the bathroom to take a cold shower. After she changed into her new pajamas, Jade saw that Dario was in the shower and she began scrolling through her social media. Caroline had told her that she had to monitor her accounts every day, post the occasional comment, and even reply to some of the personal messages from her fans. She looked at the selfie of her that Dario had posted and saw that it had received tens of thousands of positive comments. She read a few, smiled, and replied to several of them. Within moments of her replies, there were a multitude of new posts. Wow, Jade Winslet actually replied to my message. She must be really down to earth if she replies to her fans. I will always be your number one fan. You're the best. Jade smiled happily at the overwhelming support from her fans. Then, tiredness hit her, and she rubbed her eyes and called to Dario, Are you done in the shower yet? Don't take too long. Let's have an early night. She didn't dare to watch him in the shower because his body was too seductive. He was muscular, in an athletic way that made clothes fit him perfectly. But when he was naked, she could see the definition of his muscles and the way they moved separately, as if they each had a mind of their own. Dario's deep voice called back from the bathroom. Turn off the lights and go to sleep. I'll join you soon. Okay, she said sleepily. She wanted to wait for him, but she felt sleepy, and the bed was very comfortable. Dario stayed in the shower for a long time and eventually managed to overcome his arousal. When he got to the bed, Jade had already fallen into a deep sleep. She had carefully settled herself on one side and had left enough space for him. There was a faint smile on her face, and she looked very alluring. To his frustration, he felt his arousal start again. Good night, he whispered, and kissed her on the forehead before he climbed in next to her. Jade felt him cuddle up to her, and she nestled back instinctively into his embrace as she slept. She dreamed of Dari on her laying together on a sunny beach with the sound of gentle waves in the distance. Jade woke up naturally, beating the alarm that she had set, and she reached over and turned it off before it buzzed unnecessarily. She turned her head sleepily and found Dario looking at her. Episode 257 You Will Always Look Pretty to Me Jade turned to find Dario staring at her. He had one hand on her slim waist, and there was a faint smile on his face. The morning sun shone on him through the window, and he looked devilishly handsome. Why is he always so handsome? Jade wondered. He doesn't look like he's just woken up at all. Her heart skipped a beat, and she felt a little flustered. How long has he been watching me? She thought, feeling embarrassed. Good morning, Daria said in a deep, enchanting voice, before kissing her gently on the lips. She blushed in response and said, Dario, don't stare at me when I've just woken up. I must look in a complete state. Nonsense, you never look that way to me on any morning, even though it's your period, he replied. You relax while I make us some breakfast. He gently stroked her soft hair and then kissed her on the lips before sliding out of bed. She watched him move across the room toward his clothes and noticed that he must have slept naked. Her sleepy eyes watched his body, transfixed by the way it moved. It was so lithe and in control, like a lion prowling. Dario glanced back over his shoulder and saw Jade watching him. She blushed and averted her gaze. You can watch me if you want. You're allowed to watch your husband, he said with a smile as he got dressed. He was aware of his effect on her, and he deliberately slowed down 
showing off his muscular body and watching her cunningly out of the corner of his eyes. Why would I want to watch you get dressed? She asked. Just hurry up and put your clothes on. She pulled the blanket to cover her head and pretended to doze while he finished getting ready. When she was confident that he would be finished, she peeked out from behind the duvet and let out a sigh of relief to see that he was fully clothed. A thought occurred to her. Dario, this is a hotel, so how could you make breakfast for me? Don't you have to order room service? She asked. Don't worry, the hotel must have a kitchen. You just wait here, he said. You can't just wander into the hotel's kitchen and start cooking breakfast, she said with a giggle. He looked after her with love in his eyes, and she felt warm and safe. He looks after me so well, she thought. Dario turned to leave the room, but just as he was about to open the door, Jade rushed to him and hugged him tightly from behind. He was stunned for a moment, and then he turned and kissed her. You just can't bear to let me go, can you? He said with an amused expression. Don't worry, I'll be back soon. She didn't answer, but instead continued hugging him in silence. He gently slid out of her embrace and reached out for the door handle, and she said in a strained voice, Don't go! Let me hug you like this, I'll be fine in a while. He looked down at her and saw that she was crying. What's wrong? He asked gently. Dario, why are you so good to me? It makes me feel scared that one day, if you leave me, I'll never feel this way again, she said between sobs. She wiped her eyes with her fingers and looked up at him. Sometimes, I wish that he would just treat me badly, so that if he ever left me, it wouldn't hurt so much, she thought. Dario looked at her with a loving expression. He kissed her passionately and then gazed into her eyes. You're silly, he said. You're my wife, and I will never leave you. I'll be good to you until the day that I die. Really? Do you promise? Jade asked. Of course, he replied seriously. His words calmed her, and she began to feel silly. Shh, now. It doesn't look good when you cry. You're a famous actress now, he said in a soothing voice. You just relax and wait for your breakfast. She nodded in reply and gave him one last squeeze before climbing back into bed. Half an hour later, Dario returned carrying a sumptuous breakfast on a silver tray. He placed it on the table and said, For you, my dear. Jade had put on a white dress and had tied her hair up. She wore a little light makeup and looked pure and fresh. Violet had explained to her that she needed to always look her best in case the paparazzi jumped out and took a photo of her, and Jade had taken the advice seriously. They will be happy to get any pictures of you, she had said, but they will especially want ones of you looking bad. Daria's eyes lit up when he saw her. She looked brimming with energy and vitality. No wonder her fans adore her, he thought. Sometimes, I wish she wasn't so perfect, then maybe there wouldn't be so many men drooling over her. Would you like your breakfast, Mrs. Foster? He asked deferentially. She liked the sound of Mrs. Foster and it made her smile. She was about to sit down at the table when Dario grabbed her and pulled her onto his lap. She struggled to stand up, but he said, don't get up, sit properly, I'll feed you. No, I'll eat it myself, she replied, embarrassed at the thought of being fed. As she struggled, her hand accidentally touched his private parts and her body stiffened in surprise. Dario whispered in her ear in a low voice, don't try to get up again or I will ravage you. Surely he's joking, he thought, but he doesn't sound like he's joking. Open your mouth, he said in a commanding tone that she felt unable to resist. She opened her mouth and he fed her a spoonful of oatmeal with honey and blueberries mixed in. It tasted delicious and she moaned in appreciation. As she finished her oatmeal, Jade asked, Dario, why did you turn up last night? And why did you act as a double for Robert Radcliffe? Dario was silent. Episode 258, A Professional Actor Before Daria could answer, she continued, I thought that you were in charge of finances at your company. You really are very mysterious. Both you and your sister are so rich and powerful, and Violet told me that your car is worth hundreds of thousands. Your house must be worth an absolute fortune, she said. His wealth is almost unimaginable, she thought. I've already told you, you'll understand it all in time. Also, why do you care so much about kissing Robert Radcliffe? He asked, with a suspicious look in his eyes. Do you really want to shoot a kissing scene with him? Dario held her tightly in his arms and looked searchingly at her face while he waited for her to answer. Jade had just taken a spoonful of oatmeal and had not heard what he had said. What did you say? She asked, covering her mouth with her hand. His expression darkened. He took the spoon out of her hand and spooned some oatmeal into his own mouth with it. Dario, she exclaimed. You are eating my saliva. 
Even your saliva is sweet to me, he replied, amused at her shocked expression. She snatched her spoon back and continued to eat her breakfast, but Daria had no intention of being diverted from what he was saying. Are you disappointed that you didn't get to film the kissing scene with Robert Radcliffe last night? He asked, forcing himself to speak calmly. Jade knew him well enough to hear the trace of jealousy in his words. She smiled and said mischievously, Yes, my assistant said that if I could shoot a kissing scene with a famous star like Robert, it would do a lot for my reputation. Anyway, she continued, he's so handsome and it would have been a rare opportunity for me. So you actually wanted to have a kissing scene without Robert. If it wasn't for me, you would have done it. Is that right? Dario asked with barely controlled anger in his voice. Jade finished her oatmeal, stood up and put her hands on her hips. I'm a professional actor. I have to be allowed to do my job properly. Besides, it was just a kissing scene. There might even be bed scenes in the future, so you better get used to it, she said assertively. She watched Dara's expression as she spoke, intrigued to see how he would react, but she was surprised to see that he remained calm. Does that mean that he doesn't care about me being with other men? She wondered. Oh, so you're looking forward to shooting bed scenes, are you? He asked. Well... I'll phone the director and make sure that he adds some into the movie, as well as some more kissing scenes. I can be Robert Radcliffe's double again. I don't mind getting naked in front of people, Darius said triumphantly. He turned around and started packing away his work things on the desk. Does he really not know that I was joking? Jade wondered, frustrated at his response. I know that he cares about me, she thought. He wouldn't have done everything he's done for me if he didn't love me. She felt her resolve waver and doubts set in. Suddenly, she felt guilty about how she had responded. He's always so good to me. I shouldn't have teased him, she thought guiltily. Dario finished putting his things into his bag and said, Let's go. I'll take you back. Jade looked at him quizzically, trying to gauge how he was feeling, but his face was unscrutable. She stepped up to him, put her arms around him, and said shyly, Dario, I was just joking with you. I don't want to do any kissing scenes or bed scenes with any man. If you hadn't turned up, I would have refused to do the scene. She lowered her eyes as she spoke, and she didn't see the bright smile that lit up Daria's face. He hugged her back, kissed her on the cheek, and said, Of course I knew you were joking. He was playing with me, she thought, frustrated at being duped. He knew that I was joking, and he let me feel bad that I would tell him how I really feel. He's too clever for his own good. I'll remember this for next time. She pouted and looked up at him. I hate you, she said coquettishly. Daria stared at her. Episode 259. It was for your own good. Dario then said, How rude, with a laugh. Dario smiled and gently put on a pair of large dark sunglasses on Jade, and then he took her hand and led her out of the hotel toward the car. She climbed in, but there was still doubt and worry on her face. Dario held her hand in his and looked at her with a serious expression. Jade, remember that you're my wife. No matter who I am or what I do for a living, to you I have only one identity. I am your husband. I just want to be judged by you on how I am as a husband, not in my background, he said. I don't care about your background, she replied, but I still want to know more about my husband, she thought. In that case, there's no problem, he said, and he reached out and stroked her hair. He looked at her with deep affection and continued talking. I haven't told you everything about me and about everything I've done, but one day you'll understand everything about me. I won't tell you now for your own good, do you understand? She shook her head and said, Daria, I don't get it. Why don't you let me know everything about you now? What do you mean that it's for my own good? I know that he's good to me and that he would never hurt me, but I want to know all about him, she thought. The more he tells me that it's better for me not to know, the more I want to know, she reflected. I promise that you'll find out sooner or later. Just trust me, he said with a serious look in his eyes. What does he mean that it's for my own good? She wondered. Maybe it's best if I just trust him, she decided. Dario leaned over and fastened her seatbelt, taking the opportunity to kiss her on the cheek. All you need to do now is to follow your heart, he said. Whatever you choose to do with your life, I will be there for you. He didn't want to tell her about his past because he didn't want her to feel inferior to him. She came from a humble background, and he didn't want the complication of her feeling intimidated by his own upbringing. I don't want her thinking that her success in life is because of me and my connections, he thought. I want her to feel like she's succeeding on her own. I want to provide a safe world for her, and I want her to feel happy and content. If I can do that for her, 
Then everything we go through will be worth it, he thought. Jade smiled at him sweetly and nodded. She decided to trust him and to believe in him. He's earned my trust, she thought. At first, Jade had been overwhelmed by Dario's looks and his authoritative presence, but now she felt attached to him in a different way. She had grown accustomed to him being there, to his commanding tone and his dominant ways of looking out for her. It feels like I'm infatuated with him, she thought. Dario started the car and drove slowly. Jade took a deep breath and said, Dario, I have something to tell you and I want you to take me seriously. You know that there will be no kissing scenes and bed scenes in my acting career. She paused, unsure of how to continue. Am I preparing him for what's to come? Or am I preparing myself? She wondered. I don't know yet if I can do either of those things. So how can I ask him to accept it? Perhaps I'm just not cut out to be an actress. Maybe Robert was right. Maybe I should just leave the acting business to the professionals. Dario guessed what she was thinking, and he smiled meaningfully. You shouldn't worry about it, he said. From now on, you have me as a kiss substitute for any of those seedy actors who want to kiss you. Oh, and don't forget that I also do bed scenes, he added. How could this possibly work? Jade asked. You're so rich and busy. You can't just turn up on film sets whenever I need to kiss someone, she protested. Although if you did take up acting... You would probably end up much more famous than that Robert Radcliffe, she added, looking at him with adoration. Your sister is the boss of Adele Baraque. How could the brother of such an important person end up being a stand-in for kiss scenes, she went on. I can't let you do it, she added firmly. He laughed in response and said, what does my sister have to do with it? I think it will be fun, he continued. We can just pretend that we're at home and that the people around us are nothing more than air when we're on the sets. Jade rolled her eyes irritably at Dario and said, You can be Robert Radcliffe's body double this time, but I have no idea whom I'll work with next time. You won't be able to stand in for every single actor that I have to kiss in my career. Episode 260 Think of me a hundred times. Jade thought. He can't possibly have influence with every director that I work for, she thought, not to mention all the actors. Although she didn't know how he had become Robert's double, she knew that it couldn't have been an easy thing to set up. Robert Radcliffe was, after all, a famous actor and probably not used to being pushed out of a scene. The more she thought about her future acting career, the more certain she became that it wouldn't be possible for Dario to be the body double for every romantic scene that she was going to act in. It's just something that we're both going to have to get used to, she thought. Dario slowed the car down and looked at her meaningfully. As long as I'm your husband, no man in the world will ever touch you. They won't get the chance. Your kisses and your body belong to me and to me alone, he said, with a touch of arrogance. Listening to him speak so frankly about kisses and her body, Jade imagined their bodies entangled and she felt embarrassed. She blushed and looked down to the floor. She struggled to banish the images from her mind, fearful that Dario would guess what she was thinking about, but the thoughts lingered longer than she was comfortable with. Her eyes met Dario's and there was a distinct smile on his face. He sat in silence with an air of absolute confidence in himself. About half an hour later, Dario pulled up by the set, far enough from the film crew to afford them some privacy to say goodbye. Then, he took her hand in his and said gently, All right, you better go. He leaned over and unbuckled her seatbelt. She found it difficult to separate herself from him, and just before she was about to leave, she asked, Are you going back to Washington? He nodded. Yes, I have something to do there later, he replied. Then don't come back tonight, she said. It's too far for you to travel. It would take you more than two hours to drive there and back, and you'd still have to get a room. You would be exhausted, and I don't want you to work so hard just for me. I probably won't be able to sleep at night without him, but I can't ask him to travel back and forth like that, she thought. Also, the hotel would cost a fortune. He was happy that his wife was so considerate of him, and he kissed her on the lips before letting her go. Caroline and Violet were parked not far away and had seen the interaction between them through the open car door. Violet was shocked to see Jade and Dario kissing and her eyes widened visibly. Caroline, on the other hand, maintained her calm demeanour as she observed the show of affection. Dario noticed that they were being watched, released his wife from his embrace and said, "'Your agent is here to pick you up.' Jade was put out to be seen smooching and turned around in a flustered manner just in time to see Violet's widened eyes and mouth." Dario leaned close to her and whispered in a domineering tone. Today, you must remember to think of me a hundred times. If you miss even one of those times, then you will have to compensate me. Jade glared at him, 
and then she pouted and said loudly, Okay, I'll think of you at least 100 times. Don't worry. It might be more, but it won't be less. Then she closed the door and walked towards Caroline's car in a daze. Violet was completely stunned as she watched Jade walk over. She was afraid that Caroline would tell her off again, so she suppressed her excitement and tried to make herself look calmer as she spoke to her friend. Jade, what happened just now? And how did you end up kissing that man yesterday? Didn't you say that you were already married? Could it be that you're having... She began. Violet had been about to ask Jade if she was having an affair, but had decided against it. Jade doesn't seem like the kind of woman to have an affair, she thought. Caroline interrupted her thoughts and explained, That man is her husband. No wonder she refused to kiss Robert Radcliffe yesterday, Violet thought. If that man is her husband, why would she want to kiss anyone else? Oh my goodness, that's her husband, she exclaimed. Shut up, Violet, Caroline snapped. Anyone could hear you. This isn't some bit of gossip to be spread around. I'm telling these things in confidence. Do you understand? Caroline asked in a serious voice, looking around as she spoke to make sure that no one was listening. To her relief, there was no one around. Violet nodded vigorously. I know, I know, I would definitely not tell anyone about Jade's husband, she assured her. She felt excited at being entrusted with the secret, and she looked at her friend and employer in disbelief. Jade! Was that man just now really your husband? Are you officially married? Jade nodded shyly and answered simply, Yes. Violet felt disappointed that such a handsome man was already married and slightly jealous that it was Jade who had his undivided attention. But she was happy for her. Oh my God, Jade, how did you find a rich man who is that handsome and is even willing to act as a body double to kiss you in a film? She asked incredulously. Anyone who could afford an expensive car like that must be rich but why would he come to the set to act as a double, she wondered. Initially, she had speculated that he must have simply been a body double actor, and she was amazed to discover that he was Jade's husband. It made her believe in true love. Dario waited until they had left to join the crew before he drove away. As long as I can make her happy and help her achieve her dreams, I'll do anything, he thought. I'll do whatever it takes to help her become a famous actress. All I need in return is to know that she belongs to me. Episode 261 The Manga Drawings Miranda lived in a quiet street in a rundown part of New York. Anyone who could afford to had long moved away from the area, and the only people who remained were very poor or simply too old to consider moving. There were hardly any other young people there at all. She lived in a tiny apartment consisting only of one room. The bathroom and kitchen were shared spaces with other residents. It was eight in the morning, and she was walking toward her apartment with Lucas who had been following her since the previous day. She turned her head and looked at him irritably. He had a muscular frame, but his face was cold and expressionless. He's quite good looking, she thought, annoyed at herself for her wayward musings. Why is he following me? And why did those horrible people kidnap me? What is this all about? She wondered. I'm home now. I can look after myself. Can you please stop following me? She asked. Lucas met her gaze and answered decisively. No, Mr. Foster ordered that we need to protect you at all times. I'm only following orders, he replied. She rolled her eyes and asked, So, how long are you going to be tagging along? Lucas didn't answer. Surely you don't expect to come home with me, she asked. He nodded and said, Well, it's the only way to make sure there are no bad people lurking around your apartment. She knew instinctively that he didn't have ill intentions, and it occurred to her that he hadn't had anything to eat or drink for a long time. When was the last time you ate anything? She asked with a kinder tone. I'm not hungry, he replied. She sighed helplessly, not believing him. It was the first time she had seen such a straightforward and self-restrained man. She took her key out of her purse and said, Follow me, I have some food at home. After he's finished eating, maybe he'll leave, she thought. I won't be able to work properly if he's hanging around me all day. Lucas followed her up the stairs without speaking. She lived on the second floor. As they walked up, Lucas frowned. The corridor was small and dingy, and the air smelled musty. When he had been in the Special Forces, he had suffered all kind of hardships, so the dilapidated apartment was nothing to him, but the thought of a young woman living there irked him. Miranda unlocked her door, and they walked in. This place is tiny, Lucas thought. There's little more than a bed, a desk, and a closet. Although the room was small and hadn't been decorated in years, it was also tidy and spotlessly clean. Miranda looked around in embarrassment and pointed at her small bed. 
I don't have a chair, but you can sit on the bed. I'll get you something to eat, she said. She went to the communal kitchen and began making fried eggs and sausages. Lucas looked around the room. There were several manga drawing books on the desk. I thought she was trying to become an actress, he thought. He spotted a sketchbook and curiously flipped through the pages. His eyes widened in surprise when he saw how good her drawings were. These are brilliant, he thought as he looked through her work. They look like professional comic book drawings. Surely she could get these published. Episode 262. What did Miranda draw? Lucas flicked through her comic sketches. Most of them were girls' comics, and beyond the obvious skill, he didn't have much interest in them. But the last page of the book drew him to look closer. It showed a grassy background with a naked man who looked injured and close to fainting. The man in the picture was a remarkably close likeness to Dario, and the scene depicted was very much like the one five years ago when he had found him. The picture confirmed Lucas's suspicions that Miranda was indeed the woman who had saved Dario all those years ago. The question is, he thought, why did Mimi not recognise Dario when she was in the hospital? Did she really not know who he was? Or did she have an ulterior motive? He wondered. She must have done the painting years ago, but the memory must still be in her mind somewhere. Lucas's thoughts were interrupted by an angry voice behind him. What right do you have to touch my things? Miranda demanded loudly. She stormed over and placed two plates of eggs and sausages on the desk. It was simple food, but Lucas was not used to the hospitality, and he felt unusual gratitude for it. It had been a long time since another person had made him food out of pure kindness. He took out the painting and asked, Miss Mimi, do you know the person in this painting? Miranda looked down at the painting and seemed momentarily stunned. She feigned indifference and said, I don't know, it's just a comic book character, but please don't touch my things. She's lying, Lucas thought. The hairstyle, his injury, and even the ring on his finger are all exactly as they were that day. Miranda had painted the ring with great care, and it accurately depicted a design that was unique to the Foster family. The person you drew is the person you saved five years ago, who was also my boss. That ring you painted so accurately was custom made for him. If you hadn't seen it before, you wouldn't have been able to draw it. Lucas asserted confidently. It's none of your business. I've just cooked you breakfast. Please eat it and then leave, she said, her pretty face frowning in anger. Lucas couldn't understand why she was so angry, but he decided to continue with his line of questioning. Of course, it has something to do with me because I've been searching for you for the past five years, he replied. Since it's obvious that you remember him, why didn't you admit it when you were in the hospital yesterday? Has someone threatened you? He asked worriedly. No one threatened me. This matter has nothing to do with you. This is my home. Please leave now and give me back my painting, she snapped. Miranda stepped up to him and tried to push him out of her room, but he was far too strong for her and didn't budge. If you don't leave right now, I'll call the police, she threatened. The angrier she got, the more she aroused Lucas's curiosity. Call the police if you like, he said, nonchalantly sitting on the bed, and confident in the knowledge that he had enough contacts in the police to persuade them not to get involved. So what if he's your boss? What does this have to do with you? Why must you force me to tell you something that even your boss doesn't care about? Why do you care? Lucas's eyes narrowed. She had as good as admitted to knowing who Daria was. What does all of it mean? He wondered. What do you mean that he doesn't care? Why would he spend five years looking for you if he didn't care? And why did you say you didn't know him? He asked, confused. What does it matter to you if I know him or if I don't know him? You saved me and I'm very grateful to you. But I don't want you to pester me anymore, so don't blame me for being rude. I want you to get out of my apartment, she said, with a sad look in her eyes. If you admit to being the person who saved him, he will help you out of your current situation, Lucas said, looking around the room as if to illustrate his point. Episode 263 The Jigsaw Miranda looked at Lucas with sad eyes and said, I don't need your charity. I'll succeed through my own hard work. He looked at her with appreciation, surprised at her tenacity. She's quite similar to Miss Winslet, he thought. Miranda stared at the painting he was still holding, and then she rushed forward and snatched it out of his hand before tearing it to pieces. Her actions were too fast for Lucas to react to, but he looked down and noticed that it had been torn into only four pieces. He kneeled down, picked them up, and put them in his inner pocket. Then he stood up, grabbed her wrist, and asked, "'What are you doing?' It's my picture. If I want to tear it, I'll tear it. If I want to keep it, I'll keep it. What does it have to do with you? Get out and don't come back, she ordered, 
with tears in her eyes. Lucas looked at her with sympathy and let go of her wrist, and then held out a business card and said, My personal number is on that card. If you encounter any danger, call me immediately. She refused to take the card and turned her head away from him in protest. He placed the card on the desk and then left quietly, closing the door behind him. The room felt so empty with him gone, and Miranda couldn't maintain her composure any longer. She sat on the floor right where she was, hugged her knees to her chest, and sobbed. Lucas stood outside the door and listened to her crying. He waited until the crying had stopped before he quietly walked down the stairs and left the building. He took the painting out of his pocket and looked at it carefully. His thoughts drifted back five years. If it had not been for me, Dario wouldn't have suffered such a serious injury, he thought. But if it hadn't been for Lucas, Dario would have also died long ago. The bond between them was the reason that Lucas had stayed on and had worked for Dario faithfully ever since then. Miranda had no idea how long she'd been crying and sitting on the floor before her legs became numb and she stood up shakily. She went to pick up the two plates of food and found Lucas's business card. She noticed that next to the card was a stack of cash. It must be at least $2,000, she thought. There was also a bank card. What did he leave this for? She wondered. He's just an employee and he doesn't even know me. She put the money in the bank card in her purse and then she paused, looking at the business card and put it in the desk drawer. Lucas stared at the dilapidated building. It wasn't just the building that was run down. The whole street looked like it could do with being demolished and rebuilt. This is not a safe place to live, he thought. The street is too dark and too narrow. No wonder no one noticed when she was kidnapped. Even if anyone had seen it happen, there would have been no one to help her. Everyone has either moved away or is too old to look after themselves, let alone a woman in distress, he thought. She's not as vulnerable as she looks, though, he reflected admiringly. She may be slim and young, but she has a strong spirit. He took out his cell phone and called Dario, who was driving back to Washington. Dario answered the call with the car's hand-free system. Lucas didn't engage in any pleasantries, but got straight to the point. Mr. Foster, I found something of interest in Miss Mimi's apartment. I'm certain that she's the woman who saved you five years ago. What did you find? Dario asked calmly. It turns out that Miss Mimi likes to draw and paint. I found a picture that looks exactly like you did when she found you. I'll fly over with it, and you can see for yourself. There's no mistaking the likeness. A painting? Dario said, surprised. I'll see you soon, he added, and hung up the phone. He continued driving with a thoughtful expression on his handsome face. Lucas made another call as he made his way to the airport, and arranged for two men to covertly look out for Miranda. Two hours later, Lucas arrived in Washington from New York, accompanied by David. Dario had been at the film set where Jade was working, but left to meet them at his office in the Millican Agency building. His luxurious office took up an entire floor, and even had a gym and a bedroom. As soon as Lucas walked in, he took the painting from his inner pocket and presented it to Dario. He arranged the pieces together like a giant jigsaw on the desk. The three men stood and looked down at the damaged picture. David gasped excitedly. I didn't expect Miss Mimi to be so good at painting. It's clearly you, Dario, but why did she pretend not to know you when we saved her from the kidnappers? Lucas looked at David and frowned. Although he appeared to be just Dario's driver, David knew that their friendship went deeper than that and that Lucas had his boss's trust and respect. David stopped talking and looked at the picture again. Episode 264 The Last Piece of the Puzzle Mr. Foster, since we've confirmed that she's the girl who saved you five years ago, what do you think we should do now? Lucas asked. Daria didn't reply, so Lucas continued. She seems to be deeply troubled... We know that she moved out of an orphanage and into the one-bedroom apartment she lives in now, where she shares a tiny communal bathroom in the kitchen. We believe that she has a younger brother, and that they became separated when she entered the orphanage and haven't been reunited since. It seems that she's alone in the world. Dario listened to Lucas, but showed no sign of emotion. David said quietly, Dario, look at this woman. Miss Mimi saved your life, no matter what her circumstances are now. You'll help her, won't you? Dario's eyes flashed with concern for a moment before he regained his usual inscrutable composure. He stood in silence, staring at the picture for what seemed like a long time. David finally broke the silence and said, Dario, is it because of Jade? Is that why you're so cold to Miranda? I can understand how you feel. Don't feel pressured. Jade isn't the sort of person who'd make trouble for no reason. I can help you explain it to her if you want me to. Lucas then spoke up. When I found her painting this morning, I kept asking her to admit that she knew you. 
but she seemed angry, as if she misunderstood your intentions. Why didn't you tell her the truth? Why didn't you tell her that you've been looking for her all these years? You could make her understand that you want to help her. Dario reached out, gathered the pieces of painting together, and stuffed them into his desk drawer. Both of you, leave me now, he said. Lucas and David looked at each other helplessly and walked out, closing the door behind them. David sighed. What the hell is Dario doing? He began. He spent so much time looking for that woman that I thought he'd be excited to see her. At least he should express his gratitude to her, but in the hospital, he didn't even bother to talk to her. No wonder she doesn't admit to knowing him if he treats her like that. Lucas looked at him disdainfully for pondering a question with such an obvious answer. Of course, it's because he's married Jade and has conflicting feelings, David thought. Dario has always kept his feelings close to the chest. He's not like other privileged rich people who like to play with other people's feelings, David said. He doesn't keep a multitude of beautiful women around him and he's always avoided getting close to others. David had long since made peace with the rumours about his friend that he was either completely unfeeling or that he was interested in men, but he had known that Dario had just been waiting for the right woman. Now that he's married Jade, he's handed his heart over for good. That's why he's not interested in Miranda, David continued. He's not afraid of letting Jade down, he's afraid of letting himself down. He only has room in his heart for one woman, David continued. And even though Miranda saved his life, he's already committed his heart to Jade. It's not in our place to meddle in his affairs, Lucas replied. Let him settle it himself. Lucas left, and David stood alone and wondered if he was right. I always felt that there was more to the story from five years ago than Dario told me. I wonder if he's keeping something back, he thought. In his office... Dario opened the drawer with trembling hands and carefully pieced together the picture. Other than me, who else could the person in the picture be? He wondered. He closed his eyes and thought back to that time five years ago. His mind replayed the images of the girl. Flashback from five years ago. Her voice had been as sweet as a bell. Hey, wake up. You're bleeding badly, she had said. Is someone chasing you? Wait a minute. Lie down here. I'll put on your clothes and they'll think that I'm you. They won't find you, she had said in her sweet voice. I won't die, she had reassured him. The fortune teller said that I'll live a long life. Besides, you're the one they're looking for, not me. I'll be fine. Don't worry. Call me Mimi. Mimi. The woman's name lingered in Dario's ears. As the memories came flooding back to him, he recalled all kinds of scenes, and he felt pain behind his eyes. He massaged his temples with his fingers in an attempt to alleviate his now splitting headache. His breathing became unsteady, so he took several deep breaths to gather himself. He took out his cell phone and looked at a photo of his wife. The pain in his head began to ease, and he phoned Jade. Jade was at the film set in a small village. She was working hard and had left her phone in the care of her new assistant, Violet. Violet heard the phone ring and giggled when she saw who was calling. Hey, she said as she answered the phone intending to have some fun and cause a little mischief, but she was surprised to hear that Dario's voice was as cold as ice. Episode 265, A Surprise Phone Call I'm looking for Jade, Dario said curtly. Violet's smile froze at his brusqueness, which was not at all what she had expected. She immediately abandoned the idea of teasing him. Jade is currently filming. Wait a moment, please. I'll ask Caroline when she'll be free to talk, she replied flustered by his manner. He seemed so nice when I saw him kiss Jay goodbye, she thought, but he sounds absolutely terrifying on the phone. He must only be nice to Jade. Now that is a truly good husband. I'd love to find one who treated me like that. Violet quickly found Caroline and informed her that Jade's husband wanted to speak to her. Caroline nodded, walked over to the director and quietly spoke to him. The director nodded his head and shouted, all right, everyone, take a 10 minute rest. Violet looked on amazed that Caroline had the influence to tell the director to order a break. She has so much authority, she thought admiringly. Caroline followed Jade into her trailer and handed her the phone. There's a call for you, she said, before leaving and closing the door behind her. Jade realised that the break must have been called because of the phone call, and she wondered what was so important that it would lead to a pause in filming. Hello, she said politely. Jade, Dario said, excited to hear her voice. It's me. Hearing his familiar and sexy voice on the other end of the line, Jade smiled broadly. She wiped the sweat from her brow and relaxed into her chair, relieved to be talking to her husband. Hi, Dari. Why did you call me while I'm working? 
We were together just a short while ago, and I have to do my job. She chided him gently. I miss you, he said simply. She was pleasantly surprised to hear his words, and she giggled like a schoolgirl. I can't believe that my successful and busy businessman would take time out of his day just to phone me and tell me he misses me, she thought. It was the first time that he called Jade to tell her that he missed her, and she was very happy about it. Then a worrying thought struck her. Dario, has something bad happened? Is anything wrong? She asked. He didn't answer immediately, and she began to panic. Everything's fine, he finally replied. I missed you. Anyway, what's going on with you? He asked. Dario's magnetic voice enchanted her, and she felt her heart flutter as her face turned red. Jade enjoyed the sensation of being missed. She smiled mischievously and said, Me? I've been so busy that I haven't had time to think about you. Is that so? Dario replied. You promised me that you'd think of me 100 times. How many days do you think it will take you before you make it to 100? He asked. Jade's face turned pale when she heard him as she remembered the promise that she had made and Dario's threat of her needing to compensate him if she didn't fulfill her promise. Why have I got such a big mouth? She wondered. I'm always getting myself into trouble. Dario always keeps his word. I was just joking, Dario, she said with a laugh. I missed you when I was filming and I still miss you, she said in an effort to placate him. Then tell me what you were thinking about when you thought of me, he said teasingly. Were you thinking about how you lure me to your bed time and time again? Or were you thinking about the things we do to each other in bed? He asked suggestively. Do you have to be so vulgar? Jade asked, blushing furiously. What nonsense are you talking about? I don't lure you, she said in mock anger. Before he could form a reply, she cleared her throat and added, The director said it's time to get back to the set. I'm sorry, but I'll have to hang up the phone. You can't hang up until you've given me a kiss, Dario said firmly. No, what if someone hears us? Jade replied shyly. She was about to disconnect the call when he said, Come on, Jade, it's only a kiss. It's not as if I'm asking you to have phone sex. She was struck by how much she loved him and she wanted to please him. She tried to imagine what his expression was like and it made her smile. All right, all right, I'll send you a kiss, you rascal, Jade said reluctantly. She held the phone to her mouth and made a loud kissing sound. Are you happy now? She asked playfully. She was overjoyed at how connected she felt to him at that moment. Dario didn't answer, so she said in a quiet but formal voice, afraid of being overheard, Mr. Foster, can I please hang up now? His low and bewitching voice sounded in her ears again, and she was afraid that she would never be able to tear herself away from the phone. Episode 266, Obsession. Jay couldn't wait to see her husband in person again. Okay, you need to miss me a hundred times, got it? You can hang up now, Dario said. He quietly waited for her to disconnect the call before he put his phone down. Jade smiled contentedly, her face slightly flushed as she opened the trailer door and handed her phone back to Violet. Violet looked at her with a mischievous grin. She couldn't resist the temptation to tease her. Jade, you look like you're in love. You only saw each other this morning. You can't bear to be away from each other for more than a few hours, can you? I think you're desperate to make the beast with two backs with him, she teased. Violet, what nonsense are you talking about? Jade said, blushing violently. She's just as vulgar as Dario, she thought. Well, if I'm talking nonsense, the next time he rings, I'll just tell him that Jade doesn't want anything at all from him and not to call back, Violet said with a grin. Jade found her assistant's comments both irritating and funny at the same time. Stupid girl, she replied. You wouldn't dare. Jade poked her in the tummy, and the two of them started to wrestle good-naturedly. Caroline looked at the chaotic revelry with a disappointed expression and approached them like a schoolteacher. An assistant needs to act like an assistant. Hurry up and get Jade a glass of water to drink, Caroline said. Yes, Caroline, I'll go now, Violet said with a mocking tone and stuck her tongue out at Jade as she went to fetch it. Thank you, Jade said as she took a sip of the ice water, her face full of satisfaction. She didn't notice that Robert Radcliffe, who was sitting nearby, was staring at her closely, his eyes betraying a definite interest. The director called everyone together, and Jade immersed herself in her acting once again. Dario sat in his office in the Millican Agency building and stared at his phone's dark screen. He tapped the screen a few times, and a photo of his wife appeared. He pictured himself hugging her. If she wasn't busy acting, I'd drive there at this very moment to find her, he thought. Amelia Stevens sat in her new costume, scrolling through her phone, her face full of pride. 
She was surprised that Dario had made good on his promise to get her the lead role in The Female Thief. I'll make a big name for myself very soon, she thought. Jade is lucky to have a husband who is willing and capable of doing anything for her, she thought with jealousy. An idea came into her head, and she smiled craftily. Jade, did you think that I'd let you off the hook so easily because your man is protecting you? Well, I haven't finished with you yet, Amelia muttered to herself. As she scrolled through the various social media sites, she became increasingly frustrated. Why does everyone love that silly brat? She's everywhere, she thought angrily. Who cares about which stupid dress she's wearing, she wondered. Amelia continued scrolling through her phone with increasing disdain. Jade, I will take everything from you, she thought. Amelia couldn't bear to read anymore, and she angrily turned off her phone. There was a trace of coldness in her eyes as she called her assistant over. Richard, have you done what I told you to do? She asked contemptuously. Richard hurriedly brought her a coffee just as she liked it and then scuttled around behind her to massage her shoulders. Everything you instructed me to do has been done to the letter, he said in a deferential tone. After a pause, he continued cautiously. But Amelia, I think we might have gone a little overboard. If anyone finds out we were behind this, it could backfire and affect your reputation. And it wasn't easy for you to finally land this leading role. When she heard the words, finally land this leading role, a dark expression came over her beautiful face. She put her cup down heavily, turned and slapped Richard hard in the face. What do you mean? How dare you mock me? She screeched. No, no, Amelia, I didn't mean it like that. What I meant was that as you were so famous, it would reflect badly on your reputation if anyone found out about this. He explained desperately while holding his hand to his cheek where he'd just been slapped. Amelia's lips curled up slightly and her eyes were full of contempt. She said indifferently, so what if anyone finds out? After all, you're the one who did it. What does it have to do with me? A look of panic appeared on his face as he wondered what the consequences could be for him if he was discovered. How can you say that? It was you who told me to do all those things, he said fearfully. Oh, really? Did I ask you to do it? Do you have any evidence? She said in a cold tone as she played with the phone in her hand. Anyway, she continued, what do you think I pay you for? And if you want to continue to be paid, then you'd better do as I say and do it well. Now, go and buy me my favourite health smoothie and be back here in ten minutes. Richard gritted his teeth and shuffled away. She knows very well that it will take me at least half an hour to be back here with her smoothie, he thought. She just wants to make my life difficult. Richard left in a hurry, and Amelia took out her phone again and called Bruce. Bruce was sitting at his computer in his office at the Stevens Group building. He was looking at Jade's selfie in one of her social media accounts. He opened up the article on her and skimmed through it. He had become obsessed with finding news about Jade. He had read almost everything that had been written about her. At first, he didn't notice his phone vibrating beside him. All his attention was on Jade's picture. She looks so perfect, he thought dreamily. The noise coming from his phone finally registered, and he picked it up. Amelia started scolding him the moment he answered. Episode 267 a sibling's support. Bruce, what's wrong with you? Do you know how many times I've called you? Amelia roared angrily. Bruce looked at the missed calls on his phone and realized that she'd called him several times. He looked away from his computer screen and asked in a deep voice, what's wrong? There was a lot that Amelia wanted to get done, so she decided to forget about the minor things that she'd intended to talk to him about. Instead, she went straight to the most important matter. With a sly expression on her face, she said, Bruce, Do you want to give Jade a fatal blow? I've already arranged everything, little brother, she said. You mustn't miss this opportunity. I've already derailed the relationship between you and Jade, and reporters will soon come looking for you. When the time comes, she continued, you must know what to say. Very soon, everyone will think that Jade has made a name for herself thanks to the Stevens family. But now that she's become famous, she's ruthlessly dumped you because she's a tramp who will do anything for fame. Amelia was very pleased with herself. Daria would facilitate her rise to fame, while Bruce would remove Jade as her competitor. I'll be killing two birds with one stone, she thought smugly. Bruce didn't answer her. He was too busy looking at pictures of Jade on his computer screen again. Sometimes, he reflected that his obsession with Jade was unhealthy, but it never stopped him, and he always overcame those doubts. Hey Bruce, why aren't you saying anything? She asked in a shrill voice. Let me make it clear to you, I've been making these arrangements for a long time. 
Please don't screw it up. I have to start filming soon, so I can't talk about it anymore. Just remember what it is that you need to say. Amelia was about to hang up when she suddenly thought of something important and continued. Also, I asked you to investigate Dario. How's your investigation going? Have you found out anything about him? Bruce's face darkened when he heard that name. If Amelia hadn't told him, he wouldn't know whom Jade was married to. When his sister mentioned Dario's name, Bruce became enraged. If it hadn't been for him, I would have never ended up in the police station, he thought. Ever since Bruce had spent time in prison, his father had been keeping a sharp eye on him, afraid that he might bring further disrepute to the Stevens family, and Bruce blamed Dario for that. Jade had protected this man and showed affection for him in front of Bruce. She had made him suffer, and he was looking forward to taking revenge on her. His eyes were filled with malice as he thought of what it would feel like to finally have his retribution. Hey Bruce, what's wrong with you? I'm talking to you, can't you hear me? You aren't taking me seriously, are you? Amelia said, irritated at his apparent indifference. Ever since he came out of prison, he's been acting strange. He always seems cold when I talk to him, she thought. I wonder if anything to do with Jade is just too emotional for him to handle. Do you really want to know who Dario is? Bruce finally answered. You mean you found out who he is? Amelia asked excitedly. Bruce's expression was cold as he gritted his teeth and said, He's from the New York Foster family? The Foster family in New York? Amelia muttered in a strange manner, as if searching her brain for a lost memory. The Foster family? She thought, it can't be. No wonder it was difficult to find him. I didn't expect him to be that important. She'd heard a lot about the Fosters when she was growing up. Surely it can't be that family, she thought. Bruce, are you talking about the Foster family who made it onto the list of the richest people in the world last year? Oh my god, no way! This is unbelievable! She exclaimed. Although Amelia's family was rich, compared to the legendary Foster family, they were like paupers. The Fosters monopolized the financial market in many different areas, operating all over the world, and had influence over the finances of several governments. But although the family had a lot of money, they kept a very low profile. No one knew the extent of their wealth or how many people were in the family. So Dario is a member of the fabled Foster family, she said. This is a very exciting development. He is a lion among men. He would be a good match for me, she thought, her jealousy of Jade increasing. He should be my man. Jade doesn't deserve someone like Dario. I was sure that he was rich, but I didn't expect him to be so influential. Bruce, I've decided that I'm going to marry into the Foster family, she said and she laughed manically. Bruce didn't like the thought of his sister with Dario. That man makes me feel insignificant, he thought bitterly, like I'm worthless. He clenched his fist so tightly that the veins bulged in his forearms. I knew instinctively when I met him that he was something special. That damn Jade must have used some kind of seduction technique to trap him. She doesn't deserve to be with him, Amelia said spitefully. The only reason that she got to shoot the Adele Barbecue commercial and take the lead female in Decadent Lady is the Foster family's money and influence, she added unhappily. On the other side of the line, the thought of Jade being married to Dario was making Bruce frown in disgust. Episode 268, A Social Media Storm. Bruce sat and stared at Jade's picture. She's smiling so happily in this photo, it's been a long time since I've seen her smile like that. Ever since she's been with Dario, she's only treated me with contempt, he thought. He hated her bright smile. Her perfect smile once belonged to him, but that had been five years ago. I won't allow anyone to enjoy that smile, and I won't allow her to share it either. If I can't have that smile anymore, then I'll destroy the smile on her face, he decided. He grinned nastily and said to Amelia over the phone, don't worry, I'll do as you ask. If she loses her reputation and the ability to smile, then I will be happy, he thought. That's good. When the time comes, you add fuel to the fire. The reporters will be very interested in the gossip about this new movie star. I have no doubt that they'll play their part in destroying her reputation, she said, and then hung up the phone in satisfaction. A very good show is about to take place, she thought. Bruce put down his phone and stood up to leave when an assistant knocked on the door and he sat back down. Come in, what is it? Bruce asked her coldly. The assistant walked up to him and placed a file on his desk. He opened it and began reading. The file described Jade's patterns of behaviour, what places she frequented and when, 
as well as where she was likely to go in the future. Bruce looked up at his assistant and asked suspiciously, How did you find this information so quickly? When Bruce had sent people to investigate Jade previously, they had found out almost nothing at all. It had been as if someone had been working hard to erase all information about her. The assistant looked confused and confessed. I don't know what's going on either, but yesterday, someone sent me an email detailing all the information that you had asked to check. The email was anonymous. I've tried looking into who sent it, but I can't find the source. I think that someone may be helping us in secret, she added tentatively. Whoever it is, they must be quite influential to have discovered that we're investigating Jade and to know all the details of her schedule. Bruce observed his assistant as she spoke. He stared intently at the contents of the file and fell into deep thought. Who is helping me? And what's the relationship between this person and Dario? What motive could our secret helper have? He wondered. Amelia sat thoughtfully for a moment before dialing Ivana's number. Although Ivana and Bruce had not yet held a wedding ceremony, they had already received their marriage certificate, so they were officially husband and wife. Ivana had been living in the Stevens family home, but Bruce's parents were disappointed with her. It was because of her fake pregnancy. Even Ivana didn't feel happy there. She had put in a lot of effort in order to marry Bruce. Ivana was not well thought of by the Stevens family, so when she saw Amelia's name flash on the screen, she immediately picked up the phone and spoke in a sweet voice, Hello, Amelia. Is there anything I can do for you? Ivana, there are some things I need your parents to cooperate with. I don't think it should be a problem for them. Amelia said casually while fiddling with her nails. Ivana was confused, and she asked with uncertainty, Amelia, what are you trying to say? Don't worry, Ivana. It's a good thing. Amelia replied in a kind voice, but over the phone, Ivana was unable to see the malice in her eyes. Jade had been busy acting, so she hadn't any need for Violet. Violet's job was to be ready with a drink of water and to massage Jade between shots, and what that meant was that she had a lot of time to herself. She had quickly become bored and had started browsing her social media. She was stunned to see the storm of abusive comments about Jade. Violet's heart skipped a beat. As she read, she realized that several quite important people had made slanderous comments about her employer. Most of the negative content was about what she had done prior to becoming famous. And they were claiming that she had become famous by relying on the influence of Bruce Stevens, whom she had seduced, even though he was her cousin's fiancé. He had apparently abandoned his uncle and aunt who had raised him so that he could be with Jade. She had then shown no gratitude for the sacrifices that he had made and had dumped him unceremoniously. Violet became increasingly frustrated as she continued reading. What nonsense is this? She thought angrily. I never knew that Jade and Bruce had been in love, but I was her classmate for three years, and I know that she's never been the sort of person that they're describing, she thought with certainty. She looked at each of the main social media platforms and found that they were all discussing the scandal. There was speculation that Bruce's influence had been the reason that Jade had managed to get the leading female role in Decadent Lady, and that she'd often frequented bars and had slept with lots of different men. Anyone who spoke up to defend Jade was immediately met with a barrage of nasty comments, so it quickly became the case that no one dared to say anything in support of her. The trend continued to worsen, and there was a stream of vindictive comments aimed at Jade. Who started all of this? Violet wondered. And why can't people tell that it's all nonsense? Whoever set this up is clearly acting out of jealousy. Violet looked over at Jade, who was engrossed in acting a scene, and she felt deeply sorry for her. She'll be devastated when she reads these comments, Violet thought sadly. She hurriedly took her phone to Caroline, who scrolled down and read several of the posts. Caroline's usual calm expression was replaced by a look of shock. Okay, I'll handle it, she said. Don't tell her about any of this and don't give the phone to her, she added. I understand, Violet said. Caroline messaged Dario and informed him about the situation. Following Dario's instructions... Lucas had been keeping an eye on the latest social media gossip, and he was surprised to see the storm of negative comments about Jade. Episode 269, The King's Palace. Someone is taking a risk by provoking Dario like this, Lucas thought as he scrolled through the latest vitriolic posts about Jade. He drove directly to Dario's office to brief him on the new developments. He entered the office and found Dario sitting at his desk with a solemn expression looking at his computer screen. It looks like you already know, Lucas said as he put away his phone. 
Dario had been reading the stream of negative comments and was already up to date with the general gist of them. Mr. Foster, how do you want to handle this matter? Lucas asked in his usual direct manner. Dario didn't reply. He looked like a predator who was ready to pounce on his prey, and Lucas almost felt sorry for whoever would be the recipient of his fury. If David was here, he would have run away if he saw him in this mood, Lucas reflected with a slight smile. It seems like someone purposely released these lies, Lucas said. I'll investigate it straight away. He was about to leave when Dario waved his hand and said, No need, I already know who's responsible. Who? Lucas asked. Amelia? Dario replied coldly. Bruce's elder sister? Lucas asked. Find out why she did this and who helped her? Dario instructed. I'm on it, Lucas replied. Lucas wasted no time. First, he found the initial comments and traced them using their IP address. In under 10 minutes, he had a list of names and addresses. These idiots think that they're anonymous, he thought as he printed off the list of names. Amelia must have spent a lot of money arranging this, he thought. He went back to Dario to report his findings. I have a list of the people who first started the scandal. It can be traced back primarily to Richard Miles. He's Amelia's assistant, so it seems reasonable to conclude that Amelia is behind it all. Just like you thought, Lucas said. This Amelia must have a death wish, he thought grimly. Jade had been busy on the Decadent Lady film set, and she had no idea about the ongoing social media storm. Any of the film crew who began gossiping were quickly scolded by Caroline. By 10 o'clock in the evening, Jade had finally finished filming the day's scenes. It had been a busy day, and they were well ahead of schedule. Violet had spent most of the day worrying. Whenever Jade had taken a rest, she'd asked if anyone had tried to contact her, and Violet had replied that no one had. That way, Jade hadn't any reason to check her phone. Knowing that she would soon have to return the phone to Jade, Violet took one last look at the social media posts and was amazed to find that all the vitriolic messages had disappeared. She rubbed her eyes incredulously. Did I just dream it all? She wondered. It was as if nothing had happened. The initial comments and all the subsequent replies from fans had all been deleted. The current trending news consisted of positive comments about Jade's dress and how beautiful she had looked in it. Violet excitedly ran over to Caroline to show her the phone, but Caroline simply said, It's all sorted now, in her usual calm manner. Violet was baffled as to how it had been achieved, but also greatly relieved for Jade. Jade walked toward them, and Caroline intercepted her and said, Hurry up and change your clothes and remove your makeup. Tonight, we need to rush back to Washington, and tomorrow, we start work on your next movie, which is called The King's Palace. That's in Los Angeles, and time is very tight, so you'll need to be quick. Okay, I'm coming. I thought that I'd get the chance to rest, she thought. I had no idea that I was going to be doing another movie as well. Jade sighed in exhaustion. She had heard that it was easy to make a name for yourself in old costume movies, and she was grateful for the work, but she had hoped to catch up on sleep. I'm going to have to stay up late tonight and get up early tomorrow, Jade thought, exhausted at the thought of what the next couple of days would entail. She was disappointed that she might not get the chance to go home and see Dario. After changing her clothes, Jade got into Caroline's car. She kept her eyes open just long enough to send Dario a message before she fell asleep. Dario, I'm going to Los Angeles tomorrow to start work on another movie. I'm leaving tonight, so I'm not sure when I'll get to see you next. I miss you. Violet felt sorry for Jade and draped a coat over her to keep her warm. I thought that being a celebrity was meant to be fun and exciting, she thought. So why does Jade look so sad? I guess it's not that easy to be a movie star. She looked up and realized that Caroline had not taken them to Washington Airport. This looks like it must be a private airport, Violet thought. There's a luxurious private plane over there with Dario standing next to it. What's going on? Didn't Caroline say that we were taking a plane to Los Angeles? Is this the plane Caroline was talking about? She wondered. Violet looked at Caroline with her mouth agape. Oh my God, Caroline, surely this can't be Dario's private plane, she said in disbelief. Episode 270. A good man is hard to find. Caroline nodded and said quietly, Shh, don't make so much noise. Let Jade sleep. She has a very busy day tomorrow. Okay, Violet mimed, zipping her lips closed. She eyed the private plane. She simply couldn't believe how powerful and rich Jade's husband was. 
He could actually afford a private jet, and he was even willing to indulge his wife. Heavens, he was a rare good man. When Dario saw Caroline's car, he immediately straightened up and walked to meet it. Violet opened the door and jumped out hopefully, but Dario didn't spare her a glance. He picked Jade up like she was sleeping beauty. When Dario lifted her, his eyes were especially tender, and his movements were very gentle. Violet was extremely envious. She would happily die a hundred times if only she could find such a man. After Caroline finished parking, she helped Violet onto the plane with her luggage. There were two handsome men already inside. One of them had blonde hair, and his smile was very bright. Violet's immediate thought was, fresh meat. Although the other man was also very handsome, he looked cold and hard to get close to. Handsome Daria was surrounded by men who were also pleasing to the eye. Compared to Violet's excitement, Caroline was much more dignified. The moment she got on the plane, she found a seat and settled in comfortably. Wow, who's this little beauty? David spotted Violet and went up to greet her. Lucas nodded at them, but remained in his seat with a contemplative look on his face. Hello, I'm Miss Winslet's assistant. My name's Violet. Violet hadn't expected anyone to greet her and was very excited. Miss Violet, even besides such a beautiful woman as Jade, you still shine, David said. Violet flushed with embarrassment. David opened his mouth to continue, but Dario glanced at him coldly. Noticing that Jade was sleeping in his arms, he immediately shut his mouth. Dario really does go overboard with protecting his wife, he thought. David quietly pulled Violet to the side and said, Don't worry, don't stand on ceremony, I'll get you some food. Later, I'll take you to the room you'll be sleeping in. Wow, there are separate rooms on the plane? Violet asked in surprise. She really hadn't expected that. She had never been on a normal plane before, let alone a luxurious private one. You really are living in a different world when you're part of a big star's entourage, she thought. Violet had imagined that they might have to change planes because Los Angeles was so far away. She had looked at her schedule and estimated that she would need to leave about three hours for boarding. In addition to the time spent waiting in line, it would definitely have been an early morning. She hadn't expected that not only would there be a private plane, but there would be space to sleep on it. And there were so many handsome men on board. She was simply too happy. Dario ignored them and silently carried his wife to their room. Jade was so sleepy she didn't notice at all. She shifted in his arms. Dario placed her on the bed and she immediately found a comfortable position and fell into a deep sleep. He looked at her tired face and couldn't help but kiss her slightly pale lips. There was a trace of heartache in his eyes. After covering her with a blanket and turning off the light, he sneaked out. He found Lucas waiting for him at the door. Clearly, he had something to talk to him about. Dario walked two steps, opened the door of the meeting room, and sat on the sofa. Sit down and talk, he said coldly. Lucas took out a folder with a piece of A4 paper in it. It was a printout of a couple of draft articles set to appear in Explosive Weekly the following day. Naturally, they were about Jade. Explosive Weekly was a celebrity gossip magazine for the entertainment industry. It had a certain amount of influence and especially liked to report celebrity scandals. It was very popular among readers. Daria looked at the piece of paper. After reading the contents, his originally gloomy gaze suddenly became murderous. There was even a trace of danger in his eyes, as if he was going to destroy the world. The articles were extremely slanderous. They were mostly about Jade's background. What surprised Dario was that they had actually interviewed Jade's uncle and aunt. Her relatives had distorted the facts and told how they had helped their orphan niece through hardships, treating her as if she was their own daughter. However, they had not expected Jade to be so heartless. They said she had completely severed her relationship with the Winslet family. That was the content of one of the articles. The other one was about Jade's private life. It revealed that she had once had a relationship with the young scion of the Stevens group, Bruce Stevens. He had been her cousin's boyfriend, but Jade had snatched him away from her. Her cousin had been so angry that she had had an abortion. It concluded that Jade was both cold and heartless. The words of the article were as unpleasant as they could get. It was simply unbearable to read. The chief editor of the magazine had personally handed Lucas the drafts an hour before. The articles had been written by an intern reporter who had already been fired and permanently banned. He was probably still wondering why he had been blacklisted. If Lucas hadn't been made aware of these articles in time, they would have been on the streets the following day and it would have caused a sensation. Everyone knew that news on the internet could be deleted, so that was easier to handle. But paper media wasn't that simple. 
You couldn't go out and collect up all the papers that had been sold. Fortunately, these articles would never be published. Dario's face was tense, and his expression was intimidating. As soon as he figured out that Bruce was involved, his eyes filled with contempt. He had never thought that Bruce would be a coward who could do such a thing. He simply couldn't imagine how Jade had spent five years with such a man.